So in this video, we'll be looking at problem six. Problem six states that a plane has a takeoff speed of 88.3 meters per second, and the maximum acceleration of the plane is three meters per second squared. Will the plane be able to take off on a 1,365 meter runway? So this problem's a little different than what we've been doing in the previous examples where you were using the problem solving framework to solve the problem. We've kind of switched it around and we're asking you to outline the steps needed to teach a fellow classmate how to solve the problem. You can use the problem solving framework as a guide to work our way through the steps. So the first part of the problem solving framework is to visualize the problem and define a coordinate system. So the first thing we should do is define a coordinate system and we choose which direction is going to be positive. That way, once we label the known values in the problem, we can choose the correct sign for those values. So that's step one that we have over here. Step two is for us to draw a motion diagram. And since the plane's velocity and acceleration are going to be in the same direction, we know that the motion diagram should have an increased spacing between the dots. So after drawing a motion diagram, the next thing to do is to label the motion diagram with the knowns and unknowns of the problem. So let's take a look back at the problem. A plane has a takeoff speed of 88.3 meters per second. Now, if you've ever been on an airplane before, you know that you taxi to the runway where you typically stop before the airplane starts to accelerate and then eventually take off. So we can label the first dot in our diagram of having an initial velocity of zero meters per second, and we can call that starting position zero meters. So those first two dot, that first dot will have those two quantities associated with it. We know that the final dot will have a velocity of 88.3 meters per second because that is the speed needed to take off. What we don't know is what the final position is at that takeoff speed. Of course, if you've ever been on an airplane, you hope that that takeoff speed happens before the end of the runway or there'll be some problems happening. So the last, the last dot is going to have a velocity final of 88.3 meters per second. And we'll put that final position as a question mark or an unknown for the problem. For the entire motion, we have an acceleration of three meters per second squared listed up here in the problem. So on our motion diagram, spanning the whole motion diagram, we should label the acceleration as three meters per second squared. Looking at the problem solving framework, the next thing we need to do is to really explicitly define what it is we're actually looking for and what that symbol is. So that's step four here in the, pro in the steps listed, where we need to determine the final position when the takeoff speed is reached, because doing that will allow us to evaluate whether the plane will be able to take off on this distance runway. After we've done that, we've now covered the entire first part of the problem solving framework. So we can move on to the second part, which is planning the solution. So that's step five and step six in the steps that I have listed over here to the left. So step five is to compare our known and unknown variables to the four kinematics equations. That's basically looking at what information do we have and what are we looking for and seeing which equations would be best to use to be able to solve for the final position in this case. Since we're not given any information about time, but we do have velocity, acceleration, and distance, we choose the kinematic equation without time. That way we have one equation and one unknown, and we can solve for that unknown. Now that we have the first two parts of the problem solving framework worked out, we can move on to the third part, which is just executing our plan. So the first two parts 
is where the bulk of the problem happens. The third part is just carrying out all of that work you did to evaluate the problem. So step seven is to use the kinematic equation and solve for the final position of the airplane when the takeoff speed is reached. And then finally finishing up with step eight, this is where we actually answer the question and the problem. So we needed to find the final position to be able to answer the question of the problem, which is whether or not the airplane is able to take off on this kind of runway. So if the position is less than the distance of the runway, then the airplane will be able to take off. To the right here, I have a solution for problem six. What we're going to do is we're going to go through it and we are going to label the steps that we created for a student to be able to solve this problem. And we'll see if we cover the span of the solution. So starting with step one, we start by choosing a coordinate system to define a positive direction. So that's up here. So that's one. Then we're asked to draw a motion diagram with increasing spacing between the dots since velocity and acceleration are in the same direction. So we have increased spacing between these dots for the motion diagram. So that's step two. For three, we label the motion diagram. The first point has a, a position of zero meters and an initial velocity of zero meters per second. So that's here. The final dot has a velocity of 88 meters per second for the takeoff speed. And we don't know its final position. So that's three, the span of the motion has an acceleration of three meters per second. So we're covering this entire motion diagram with this. So that's good. For four, we are asked to determine the final position when the takeoff speed is reached. So that, again, that's our unknown for the problem. And that is what we are looking for. So that's four. For five, compare our known and unknown variables to the kinematics equation. So this is where you end up choosing the equation that fits the values that we are given. Since we're not given anything about time, but we are about distance, acceleration, and velocity, we should choose the kinematics equation without time. So that's step five and six. And the check marks and the question marks come from evaluating our known and unknown variables. Now we've covered the first two parts to the problem solving framework. So the last part is just executing our plan by doing the algebra. So that's step seven and that covers all of this where it says to use the kinematic equation to determine the final position of the airplane at takeoff speed. And that was us using that kinematics equation. And then finally, it's not just solving for the final position. We are asked to evaluate whether the plane is going to be able to take off. So that is the end goal of this problem is to come up with a statement of whether or not this plane can take off. So that's what we have done here in this, this boxed area where the, we state that the plane is able to take off because we got a final position of 1300 meters for the plane to reach its takeoff speed when the runway is 1365 meters long. So there's going to be roughly 65 meters of space. So this is, step eight in our solution. Using the framework to help develop these steps, we're able to span the entire framework to ultimately get to the final result. So this process may have, have been difficult for you. And a lot of that probably has to do with, this is just a new approach to solving a problem. So one thing that I would suggest trying is going back to some of the previous examples where we just solved the problem using the framework and doing the reverse. Take this framework and outline the steps needed to get to the final result and put it into words and compare that to this example 
and see if you're able to span the entire solution process.